The Yerkes Dodson rule relates stress to performance, as we can see here. The idea is that under low stress we don't perform well. At medium stress we have optimal performance and as stress rises above this level performance deteriorates. So what's the origin of this rule and is it true? In 1908, Yerkes and Dodson published the results of a series of experiments. Mice were placed in a chamber with two exits, one dark tunnel and one light tunnel. Both tunnels had bare wires in the floor through which electric shocks could be delivered. The light tunnel led back to their nesting chamber and the dark tunnel led to a dead end and the position of the tunnels was interchanged at random. The experiments were designed to study how long it took the mice to learn to go through the light tunnel. Motivation was added by giving the mice an electric shock through the wires if they went into the dark tunnel. Two things were varied, the size of the shock and the difference in grey tone, the light level, between the dark and light tunnels. So what did they find? The results seem to show that when the difference between light and dark was strong, black versus white, the learning was faster with larger shocks. When the difference between light and dark was intermediate or weak, the task was more difficult and the learning took longer, but it was faster for intermediate shocks than for either the small or large ones. This proposed relationship between stress levels and performance is an example of hormesis. Hormesis is when an agent has an effect that rises with dose up to a maximum, then falls with further increases in dose and may pass again through zero to become negative. This effect is commonly encountered in pharmacology, toxicology and environmental health. The question is, do stress and performance show homocysts? There are several criticisms of the original experiments and attempts to repeat the findings in mice and other animals have had mixed results. The difficulty is in separating the effects of motivation, arousal and distraction because most experiments use stimuli that can potentially give all three. It has repeatedly been shown that task performance increases with increasing motivation and declines with increasing distraction. What is not so clear is whether low levels of distraction can increase performance or whether high levels of motivation can reduce it. Some results suggest that this is true and even if it is not, the yerkes dodson law may have practical value because many real life situations have elements of both motivation and distraction. It has been suggested that situations of low arousal can be made safer by adding stressors. The alternative catastrophe model shows that physiological arousal displays a mild inverted U relationship with performance when cognitive anxiety is low, but that catastrophic declines in performance can occur if both physiological arousal and cognitive anxiety are high. yerkes dodson effects have been claimed for memory, visual perception and eyewitness recall. They have also been claimed for simulator-assessed laparoscopic surgical dexterity. Whether these effects are true hormetic responses to individual stimulants is not at all clear. This graph suggests that workplace stress can be fine-tuned in order to optimise performance. This is controversial, but there is consensus that very high levels of stress do impair performance and do so very significantly.